Carlo Collati was born in Florence, Italy on November 24th, 1826. But he wasn't Carlo Collati then, he was Carlo Lorenzini. His mom was a seamstress and his dad was a cook and they both worked for the same wealthy Italian family in Florence. That's how they met. But his parents were not wealthy. In fact, his dad was barely able to provide for his family and life was hard for the Lorenzinis. Carlo was the first of 11 children and only four survived to adulthood. Theirs was a very harsh existence. Florence was a beautiful place, is a beautiful place, but the crooked little street where little Carlos was born was dim and full of shadow and hardship. And Carlo and his siblings, in fact, were often sent to live with, with their grandmother, his, their mom's mom, in this beautiful little town called Colati. But even in beautiful Colati, Carlo didn't have privilege or plenty. Life was nice in this fancy villa here, but in the village uphill behind it, people lived by just scraping by. In fact, if you pay attention to the story of Pinocchio, you see how much concern there is with day-to-day -day existence. Things like having enough to eat, making do with barely enough clothing and shelter. After primary school, Carlo was sent to seminary, which is a school where, in this case, where they teach you to become a priest. But Carlo decided he didn't want to be a priest, and he went on to study philosophy and rhetoric, which is persuasive speaking and writing. But it's said that it was at the seminary where he got the idea for the story of the selfish little wooden puppet with an attitude and a lying problem. Of course, he didn't write that story right away. He had some living to do first. First, he worked in, in a cool old bookstore where he learned to use a little printing press and developed an interest in literature. And then, as a young man, he volunteered in the Tuscan army during the Italian War of Independence. And this made him particularly interested in political affairs. He really, really cared about unifying Italy, which consisted at that time of lots of little duchies like states. And he thought that it would be better for everyone if Italy could be a country instead. So after the war, he wrote political content to persuade adults that this was a good idea, using humor and satire to share his views about what he thought Italy and the Italian culture should be like. He started two newspapers. The first one got censored and shut down by the Tuscan government, and it was called um, The Lamp Post in English. And so after that got shut down, he started a second one called The Controversy. And then he began to write plays, and this is where he took on the name of his mother's hometown, Colati, as a pseudonym or a pen name. Well, after a lot of war, Italy did end up getting unified as one country. And this is when Carlo turned his attention to writing for children. He was kind of over trying to convince grown-ups to see things his way, saying that adults are too hard to please. So for a while, he translated fairy tales into Italian and even wrote his own children's stories, including this one about a character named Genetino. Since education was another thing he really cared about, or maybe just to keep up with his gambling debts, he first wrote, among other things, school textbooks for children. Things like Johnny's Arithmetic Primer, Johnny's Grammar Book, and Johnny's Journey Through Italy. But eventually, he penned the story that children have loved, arguably more than they loved Johnny's Lessons in Geography. And Pinocchio first appeared in 1881. It was published at first in a children's magazine in serial form. Not serial like Lucky Charms, but serial as in a series of stories that appeared one at a time with each edition of the paper. And it's interesting that Mr. Collati wrote Pinocchio for kids, even though he didn't particularly like children, it is said, and he never had any of his own. Maybe, it's also been said, he was really writing to parents and the government, since Pinocchio has a lot to say about raising children with good values and good sense and the importance of education. Another fun fact is that originally, Mr. Collati didn't finish the story with the happy ending it has today. In fact, he left Pinocchio hanging on that tree where the assassins had left him, pretty much dead. He was trying to end the series, and he wrote a big finale at the end of that episode. But there was a storm of protests from parents and children, and no doubt paper's publisher as well. So Collati was forced to bring his character back to life and create an ending that was more suitable for kids. Much more satisfying, don't you think? 
Well, before the story was quite finished, a publisher picked it up and printed it in one big book. Here's the first edition. And now readers could binge read it from start to finish instead of waiting for the next part to be published. And sadly, Carlo Collati never lived to know how popular his story became, let alone that it became a true classic. He died suddenly at an early age, only 63, in 1890, two years before The Adventures of Pinocchio was translated into English and 48 years before Disney released the animated version. Well, today there is a park in Kaladi celebrating this wonderful author and paid for by, at the time, by donations of children, if you can believe it, plus $100 from Walt Disney. But it seems that Walt Disney owes him more than that. <laughs> and currently operated by the Carlo Kaladi Foundation. Since its first publication, The Adventures of Pinocchio has been adapted for film multiple times, not just the Disney version, and has sold more than 35 million copies. That's an amazing career for such an ungrateful and hard-headed little puppet as Pinocchio was when he started out, don't you think? It's really too bad that Mr. Collati didn't live to see what a success and a cultural icon his little rascally marionette became. We think he deserves our gratitude for not just writing the story, but for getting Pinocchio down off that tree and turning him into a real boy for Geppetto and for us. Thank you, Mr. Kalati, 